Understanding how workloads are deployed within VMware Cloud on AWS is a critical part of the overall onboarding process. In this section, we will discuss at a high level a few of the strategies for onboarding workloads into an SDDC. The following strategies are divided roughly into two categories, Greenfield, which involves deploying fresh workloads into the SDDC, and Brownfield, which involves migrating existing workloads into the SDDC. Let's begin by first discussing Greenfield deployments. With a Greenfield deployment, we are deploying new workloads into the SDDC from ISO or OVA files. As with all of the examples discussed here, we will assume that the SDDC has already been provisioned, IPsec VPNs have already been established to the on-prem environment, and the security policy of the MGW has been configured. For the first step of a Greenfield deployment, an IP range should be allocated for use by the compute network of the SDDC. Here, we will allocate a slash 20 network. Following IP allocation, the compute network should be made reachable from the on-prem network. Here, this is accomplished using a static route within the on-prem router. Next, the security policy of the CGW must be adjusted to permit connectivity into the compute network. In order to provision workloads, we'll need some ISO or OVA files. One of the simplest ways of getting these files into the SDDC is to use the content library feature of vCenter. Using a content library, we can either directly download images through a provided URL, or we can sync to an existing library. For this example, we'll synchronize images from a content library of the on-prem vCenter server. The next step of the process is to create logical networks for our workloads. Once logical networks have been created, we may begin deploying the workloads themselves. These workloads are accessible to the on-prem network through the VPN connection to the CGW. The next scenario involves migrating active workloads from the on-prem network to the SDDC. In this example, we will assume that only a portion of the workloads will be migrating from the on-prem environment to the SDDC. We will also assume the constraint that IP addresses are not portable to the SDDC. Therefore, the IP addresses of the workloads must be changed as part of the migration process. As with the previous example, the first step is to allocate an IP range to the compute network of the SDDC. Following that, routing must be configured such that the new IP address range is reachable via the IPsec tunnel to the compute network. The security policy of the CGW must also be configured. Finally, we will create a logical network within the SDDC. The SDDC can now accommodate migrated workloads. In order to perform the migration itself, we can use site recovery for workload replication, as well as to reconfigure the IP addresses of the migrated workloads. Once the workloads have been replicated, then we are free to shut down their active counterparts within the on-prem environment, and then to power on the workloads within the SDDC. Finally, since we have changed the IP addresses of these workloads, we must remember to update critical services such as DNS to reflect this change. The SDDC is now the active site for the migrated workloads. In this example, we will discuss the notion of data center evacuation using the site cutover method. The scenario here is that the on-prem network is being shut down and that all workloads will be migrated to the SDDC. As such, all of the networks will be ported to the SDDC and the workloads themselves will retain their IP addresses. The first step in the process is to configure logical networks within the SDDC, which mirror those used in the on-prem network. Next, the workloads will be replicated to the SDDC. For this, either Site Recovery or HCX may be used. Once the workloads have been fully replicated, the site cutover process may begin. The first step of this process is to shut down all of the resources within the on-prem environment. Next, workloads within the SDDC will be powered on and made active. Once the workloads are live within the SDDC, routing within the on-prem network must be configured such that the migrated networks are known via the IPsec tunnel to the CGW. Finally, remember to adjust the security policy of the CGW. The SDDC is now the active site. A common requirement is that workloads retain their IP addresses post-migration to the SDDC. However, the notion of a full site cutover in a single maintenance window is often impractical. In these cases, a different approach to migration is required. 
In this example, we will explore the notion of migration using L2 network extension. The idea is to extend one or more networks from the on-prem environment into the SDDC and then migrate groups of workloads over the course of multiple maintenance windows. This approach allows the workloads to keep their original IP addresses while also providing the end user with a fine level of control over the migration process. For this example, we will discuss migrations using HCX. HCX is a tool which has been specifically designed to facilitate workload migration and provides features such as migration scheduling, WAN optimization, and L2 network extension. HCX is free for use with VMware Cloud on AWS, however, it must be activated within the SDDC before it may be used. When using HCX as a migration tool, the first step in the process is to activate and deploy the HCX service. HCX requires components in both the SDDC and the on-prem environment. While the installation within the SDDC is automated, the end user is required to install and configure the on-prem appliances. Once HCX is installed and configured, the next step is to extend networks to the SDDC. It is important to note that HCX will configure and maintain its own dedicated IPsec tunnels for L2 extension. The HCX appliances are out of path of both the MGW and CGW, which means that HCX does not rely on them for connectivity. Once the networks have been extended to the SDDC, then the process of workload migration may begin. Again, these migrations may be performed gradually over time as determined by the HCX administrator. Let's pause for a moment and look more closely at the network path for the migrated workloads. The first thing to note is that the extended networks are not tied to the routing infrastructure of the SDDC, but are completely isolated outside of the L2 extension to on-prem. This means that the workloads will continue to utilize the on-prem router as their default gateway. Taking a couple of specific traffic flows as examples, imagine the network path between VM1 and VM2. In this scenario, both VMs exist within the SDDC and are attached to the same logical network. Therefore, traffic flows between them will remain local to the SDDC. Now, consider the path from VM1 to VM3. Again, both VMs reside within the SDDC. However, they are attached to different logical networks. In this scenario, network traffic between the VMs must cross the default gateway. This means that the traffic will flow from the SDDC to the on-prem router and then back to the SDDC. This pattern is commonly referred to as tromboning, and it is not a unique attribute of HCX, but rather a fundamental artifact of stretched L2 networking. When planning this type of migration, it is critical to keep traffic flows in mind in order to minimize the tromboning effect. Continuing with the discussion, we can now see that all workloads have been migrated to the SDDC. As such, we are now free to proceed to the next phase of the migration. This next phase is very similar to the site cutover model discussed previously. Here, we are essentially making the SDDC the active environment for the migrated networks. The first step in the process is to disconnect the L2 extension and make the logical networks routable within the SDDC. The SDDC is now active. The next step is to shut down the networks within the on-prem environment. Now, the compute network of the SDDC must be made reachable from the on-prem environment. Once again, we'll use static routes to accomplish this. The security policy of the CGW must also be adjusted to allow the connectivity. The SDDC is now active and fully reachable from the on-prem environment. This concludes this portion of the discussion. For more information on this, as well as other VMware Cloud services, please visit us at cloud.vmware.com. Thanks for watching.